Dr. Malab Raghani is a specialist plastic and reconstructive surgeon based in Brisbane. He is a fellow of the Royal Australasian College of Surgeons and Royal College of Surgeons in England. Dr. Raghani has experience in a wide range of plastic surgery procedures with a particular focus on skin cancer, melanoma, and reconstruction of the face, head, and body. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us today about scalp reconstructions. My first question, Dr. Raghani, is that I, I understand you've had your fair share of patients presenting with squamous cell carcinomas or SCCs on the scalp. Maybe you can give us a bit of background as to why that may be the case and the typical patient that you may come across in your practice. Well, thank you for having me. Unfortunately, Australia is the skin cancer capital of the world. And in particular, the non-melanoma skin cancers are highest in Queensland. These include the basal cell and squamous cell cancers. And we see a lot of them in the head and neck region. In particular, we've seen a lot of SCCs, the squamous cell, in the scalp. And we see that, unfortunately, in men who are usually between 50 and 70 years old that have had high sun exposure. And patients ask me why that is. There's a number of reasons. And there's things you can change and you can't change. Things that you can't change are your genetics. You have origins of fair skin or a Celtic background. And then also you have an environment that has high UV index or sun exposure. And sometimes your job, whether it's outdoors on a farm or in the military, means that you're exposed to that a lot. Thanks, Dr. Rigani. Um, I'm always intrigued by the ability of plastic surgeons to find ways to patch up missing skin and skin defects that are left behind after removal of the cancerous tissue. Um, are you able to maybe describe some of the techniques that you use in, in scalp reconstructions? Yeah, sure. I think for me, the goals of clearing uh, scalp cancer are three. One, you have to remove the cancer in its entirety. Two, you've got to rebuild the area so that it's suitable. And three, hopefully you can return the patient to their normal life and get them doing the normal things they do. For me, plastic surgery has a range of techniques and we can start from something smaller, such as a skin graft or a local flap where we move a piece of local tissue around and to fill the area that's been removed in order to make the wound heal quicker and better. And also, if the patient needs to have radiotherapy afterwards, they can withstand it. In cases where people have had more operations or they've had previous radiotherapy and we don't have any of these local options, we have to go to a much bigger operation. Thankfully, at the Royal Brisbane, we perform these operations quite frequently. And for us, it's become a very routine practice. This involves removing an entire area of the scalp, Sometimes we have to take the bone with it, and this we do with our neurosurgery colleagues. And then we rebuild the bone. We also rebuild the skin around it. And we do that by taking the big muscle from your back, the latissimus dorsi muscle. We detach it, and reattach it to the blood supply in front of your ear, and then we connect it up. And that's known as a scalp resurfacing or a free tissue transfer technique. Wow, that's that's really amazing. The you know the the work that you you do, um, I can only imagine the the positive impact your surgery can make on someone's life. Do you have any good news story or, or case study that you would like to tell us about? Yeah, well, look, for the last six years, I've been seeing a lot of these patients. We actually have one of the largest studies for scalp SCCs, nearly three hundred patients, and it's hard being able to support look after these patients. But the best part is seeing them come through at the other side. I see, unfortunately, a lot of patients that come from far afield, and that can be from Cairns, Rockhampton, Bundaberg, far away, or even nearer Brisbane. And sometimes these are mostly these men with large skin cancers, or they've had multiple operations. And sometimes they're worried, they're anxious, they're fearful of the operation. And to see them go through it, support them through it, talk to them, about each stage and then see them come out the other side and being able to return back to their farms, play on the beach uh, or with their grandkids is, is a really nice feeling. And it's a privilege to really be looking after these patients. That's, that certainly sounds really self uh, satisfying, both for yourself and, and the patient. 
Um, thank you, Dr. Ragani, for providing this really valuable insight about scalp reconstruction. For Thanks further so information about plastic and reconstructive surgery on our members, please visit our website at www.plasticsurgery.org.au.